Hi folks, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here with my Mercedes ML Class W164 chassis vehicle that has the OM642 3 litre turbo diesel engine. And this vehicle's currently got a check engine light on. So today, we're gonna to diagnose this vehicle and hopefully fix the vehicle using our iCarsoft CR Pro Plus scan tool. So let's get into it, scan this vehicle, let's see what codes it throws and see what's wrong with it. So we jump into the car and to start with we need to plug our scan tool into the OBD2 port. We find that under the driver's footwell, we just open that little flap down there. I've done this a few times so you just feel down there but you can get down and have a look. And then straight away you can see that's slotted in and our scan tool starts to boot. So with the iCar soft scan tool booted, let's select diagnostics and we'll come into Benz, select the software version and just wait for it to initialize. And then we will do the VIN identifier for this vehicle. Come down to read the VIN number. So right now it's just reading that VIN code from the vehicle. So it just takes a few seconds for that to occur. Fantastic. So press F1, F1 again. And let's do an auto scan of the vehicle. So it wants the ignition switched on. So what we'll do, we'll actually start the vehicle and hit F1. So you can see ECM, it's come up with a fault there. So we'll go into that in a few minutes time and have a look at that fault. As you can see, as we scan the vehicle, the radio switches on and off several times and there's a few error warnings come up on the dashboard, but that's normal because the scan tool is actually testing all of the features on the vehicle and it's going through all of the control modules. So you do expect um, certain warnings to pop up as it's doing its tests on all of the modules throughout the vehicle. Interesting, we've got a Xenon headlamp fault. We might have to look into that in another video, but uh, the headlamps are actually working on this vehicle. So I'm not too concerned about that at this stage. Just interested to find out what's going on with this check engine light. All right, so now that we've finished that scan, let's come into the engine control module and let's read that fault code. So we've got ourselves a 148A00. It's a historic fault. The number of times regeneration of the diesel particular filter was performed is too high. So folks, what I find particularly interesting about this fault code, and I've actually had this exact fault code on this vehicle a little bit over a year ago now. And what I find interesting is there's actually other fault codes that can be thrown by the ECU if the ECU detects that the DPF is actually blocked. However, in this case, we've only got one fault code and it's telling us that the number of regen cycles is simply too high. So I really find that perplexing. I'll put a link to the video which I did about a year ago on this same problem. And I was able to clear the fault for now a year simply by running some DPF anti-clog through the vehicle. But I want to dive a little bit deeper now into the live data. And let's see if we can actually find what is the source of this problem because I'm not actually convinced that the DPF is blocked. But let's see what the live data is actually telling us and let's see if we can find the actual real source of this problem. So why don't we jump into the live data and let's see if we can find out what's actually going on here. So view data. Okay, so we can do a data at the start engine, it's not what we want. Smooth running, injector, quantity adjustment. No, we don't want that. Injectors, a lot of injectors. Diesel particular filter, that's what we want. We want to read the live data for the diesel particular filter. Okay, so let's just select all of these. So F2 and let's press enter there and hit F1 for done. Okay. So what's really interesting is we've only got an ash content of one gram and a load state filter of one gram, which tells me that the um, 
diesel particulate filter, the car doesn't actually think it's blocked. So look at the exhaust back pressure sensor. So that's 1,055. Seems to be probably about right, but let's just keep going through. Temperature, differential pressure sensor. So 13 millibars. So that's what I expect. Now the vehicle's idling. So what I'm just doing, I'm just gonna bring the revs up. Bring it up to say 2,000. So we've got up to 2,500 and we've got 63 millibars now you know what I, my experience tells me that at about this sort of operating revs so two and a half thousand rpm that's about normal if this dpf was blocked we would have 100 or 200 millibars so i really don't think the dpf is blocked in the vehicle so let's just keep looking at some else of our live data last time since particular filter regen so it was about 200 kilometers ago, but it's telling me that one wasn't successful. The one that was successful was 200 before. So that's obviously why. Anyway, so let's do some further investigation. So looking at that live data on the scan tool actually confirmed to me my suspicion that I actually don't think the DPF filter in this vehicle is actually blocked at all but something is triggering a DPF regen for some reason. So a little explanation of the DPF system. You actually have a number of different sensors that run into the ECU to detect when to actually do a DPF regen. So I'll just throw up onto the screen a picture of the DPF system of the vehicle. And as you can see, you've got a number of sensors which the vehicle uses to determine when to actually do a DPF regen and the general state of the DPF. So we've got the pressure differential sensor. You saw on the scan tool that I was actually measuring the live data of that sensor. And I don't think that's the issue because you can see the values were fluctuating. It was going up when I revved the vehicle up, but it was still within an acceptable level, which indicated to me the DPF's not actually blocked. You've got the oxygen sensor and you've got the DPF temperature sensor as well. So as I've said, I actually don't believe that this vehicle's DPF is blocked at all from the data that I can see. So we need to think about how the vehicle actually determines when to do a DPF regeneration. And it's two factors. It's really how long it is since the last successful DPF regeneration. And then it's actually doing a calculation, which actually uses that differential pressure sensor and it uses the mass airflow sensor to determine how much air is actually flowing through the air filters and into the intake system. It combines those two data points together. So with the engine running, I've been doing a bit of a poke around this vehicle to see if I can see any obvious air leaks in the intake system. And with the engine running, I can't see anything genuinely that's not correct with this vehicle. Now, as I said, I think the DPF differential sensor is correct because we can see the fluctuating values and they're actually within the range. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna remove the air filters of this vehicle. And I'm just gonna inspect air filters. Now, I'll do that off camera. Um, there's a video I can link in the description of how to take the air filters out. But I'll come back to you with what I find from the air filters. Okay folks, so I've just removed the air filters out of this vehicle and I think I might have actually found what the problem is. Now I'll just bring you in close. Have a look at that folks. You can see that these air filters are really blocked up. You can see I must have driven through a bee storm or something because there's just blockage through about a third of the elements of these filters with bees. Now, what's really interesting is I actually only changed these filters in this vehicle probably about 20 or 25,000 kilometers ago. And that's why I said, you know, you can go and look at the video if you want to see how to take the filters out. So folks, I just drove down to my local car parts store and I picked up these aftermarket air filters for the vehicle. They're a Westfield brand. They're actually super good value compared to buying the genuine Mercedes air filters, which they really do just gouge you. Um, I'll chuck a link in the description as to where you can probably buy these online as well. And I'll put the part number in as well, but I've installed the filters in and we've got it all set up now. So what we're gonna do now, which is really important, we'll jump back into the car and we'll use our scan tool to recalibrate the mass airflow sensor on this vehicle 
after we've changed these air filters. So we've just plugged in our iCar Soft CR Pro Plus again. We're at the top level, we're gonna to come to the service menu. Okay, then we're going to come down to, keep coming down to the air filter. We'll select the air filter there and come into the bends option select the software version once again the device is initializing so just wait for that to occur and then we're going to do the vin identity of the vehicle come down to read that f1 it's got the vin number and just check the details these are the correct details for my vehicle and once again initializing I've actually got the engine running, so we can just F1 the ignition on and application running. Air filter, fantastic. So we've got two options here. Reset values for drift compensation or resetting air filter learn values after air filter replacement. So let's just hit that. Set the ignition on, which it is. We've got the engine running and we'll press OK. Teaching process after replacement of component air filter. Okay. Test prerequisite ignition on, engine off. Okay, so let's turn the engine off. So we'll just leave the ignition on and we'll press F1. Okay, there. Communicating, please wait. Procedure has been completed. F1, okay. All right, so let's now go back in and we'll go back to the service menu so i'll go back to the diagnostic menu and we'll run the scan on the vehicle and we'll clear that code for the dpf regen too often and hopefully get rid of that check engine light. So we've still got that code there to clear the fault. Okay. Read the fault code. No fault code found, excellent. Okay, so we've put new air filters in the vehicle. We've recalibrated the sensors associated with the air filters. We've cleared the fault code associated with the DPF regen too many times. Let's start the engine now, confirm that the check engine light is gone, and then let's take the vehicle for a decent drive, and let's see if that regen error code comes up, because it was coming up pretty much every time you drive with the check engine warning light. Let's see if that comes up again. So there you go, folks. So that check engine light is clearly off now. Okay, so let's take the vehicle now for a bit of a test drive and let's see how it performs now that we've swapped in those air filters and done that recalibration of the sensors associated with the air filter. So here we go, folks. So straight away, I can actually notice that the vehicle's actually more responsive. Now, that could be a combination of factors. One, we've got brand new air filters that are not blocked, and two, we've recalibrated those sensors, but it really is feeling responsive straight away. I mean, just feel that go. That's just fantastic. So what I might do is I'll continue driving the vehicle now for about 10, 15 minutes. I've got a few errands to do, and then I'll come back to you and report what my thinking actually is. So I've been driving the vehicle now for about 20 minutes in fact, and I'm really pleased to say that the vehicle's driving really well. It's really responsive, and it's actually like it's a slightly different vehicle in fact. So those new air filters, I know they were pretty blocked, and recalibration of those sensors. So that's making a difference in its drivability straight away. But importantly, we haven't had that check engine light come on. And also, 
if you're in tune with the vehicle, you can tell when it's doing a DPF regeneration and the vehicle has not tried to do a DPF regeneration. Now on the Mercedes, there's no light that actually shows you when it's doing a DPF regen. However, you can tell on two factors, either the RPM at idle, so right now it's at 850 RPM, I'll just show you that, but when it's doing a DPF regen at idle, it's up around the 950 RPM. Also, what you notice when you're driving the vehicle is it doesn't like changing into the upper gears when it's doing that DPF regen. So I know when it's doing a DPF regen, and I knew before with that check engine light, straight away, whilst it was on, I could tell that the vehicle was trying to do a DPF regen an awful lot of the time. So I knew something was up, so I'm really happy. But what I would do, so I'm actually gonna leave it a couple of days before I actually film the ending to this video and I'll come back in a few days time after I've monitored driving the vehicle just to check if we've really solved this problem here with that error code saying the DPF is regenerating too many times. So there you go folks, that's the video on the Mercedes where it's throwing the error code telling us that the DPF is regenerating too many times. I've actually waited a few days before recording this video so that I could drive it a few times and absolutely check that that error code wasn't being thrown again and we weren't seeing the check engine light. And I'm happy to report back that we haven't had the check engine light and I've just done another scan of the car and that error code is not in the system. So I believe we've absolutely got to the bottom of this problem with the DPF regenerating too many times. So as you saw, we used our iCarsoft scan tool to diagnose the problem. We also used a little bit of intellect along the way and I showed you that diagram of the DPF system. And in the end, we worked out it was an airflow problem. And by inspecting the system, I found these blocked air filters. We then recalibrated those airflow sensors and voila, we don't have the issue anymore. So if you have liked the video, do give us a like, drop a comment down below. If you wanna see a series of videos on the iCar soft scanner, check out the channel. But also on the channel, you'll find servicing and maintaining a number of different vehicles. We've got the Mercedes, we've got the Audi, we've got the Mazda 3, and the early Ford Falcon. If you're also interested in a bit of DIY around the home, we've got that too. So do subscribe to the channel. But until next time, 